Here's five cool multicolor models I printed using the Corality High Combo 3D printer. Starting off strong, we have a Mecha Dragon design from Mesh Mayhem over on Thangs. The file I downloaded was a pre-painted 3MF file, so I just had to drag it into the Creality Slicer, select my filament colors, and send it over Wi-Fi to the Creality High. Overall, this thing printed great, except for one of the arm linkages that I had to glue back together. And I did run out of gold filament and had to switch to a dull yellow, but it's not super noticeable. The Creality Slicer is based off the same engine that Prusa Slicer and Bamboo Studio use, so it has full feature parity with all the top dogs. But it has been reskinned and laid out a little differently, which can make some features a little harder to find. But I'm sure there's a Creality High combo preset in Orca Slicer if you're used to the more standard interface. Next, I printed this dragon piggy bank from STL Flix. This one definitely didn't need to be printed all at once, but I thought it'd be a good test to see how reliable the CFS system is. Speaking of the CFS, there's a few things that make this multi-filament system stand apart from others on the market. It has a digital readout for temperature and humidity, and while it isn't actively heated, it seals tightly and uses desiccant packs to dry the filament. There's also these extended PTFE tubes to reduce wear, and a spring-loaded bar on the lid to keep a bit of pressure on the spools so the rollers can grip better. I tested this out with cardboard spools and that worked great, and it should help with the lighter, almost empty spools as well. After a bit of super glue, our little derpy dragon coin bank is assembled and ready to be filled with pocket change. The only issue I found on this one was a bit of over extrusion, giving some of the top layers a bit of a rough texture. That's an easy fix though, I just backed my flow rate down by 2%. Had I caught this earlier, our mecha dragon arm linkage probably would have printed successfully. Next, a tribute to the goats. A quick Aussie and Lemmy plaque of this iconic photo. This one's from Parabolumix over on Maker World. This is probably a good time to mention that I didn't have to level the bed or adjust offsets at all on this machine. All that is handled automatically and the results are terrific. Next, a cool coin bank vault model from the folks over at STL Flix. This one's meant to be single color, but I used a couple tricks to add a pop of color. First, I split the entire file to parts. Then I sliced these embossed portions of the vault, making sure to select slice to parts. I 
I selected filament for each part and sent it over Wi-Fi to the machine. Some of the Creality spools have RFID tags in them and auto-assign material type and color in your slicer. And if you're using the external single spool holder, you can even tap the spool on the outside of the machine here to load that color and material type in your slicer. If you're using generic filament, you can just manually enter your filament type and color during loading. This fault turned out great, aside from a bit of stringing, but that's an easy fix with the heat gun. Last but not least, this knitted crocodile from Draft Axis over on Maker World. Again, another single color model, but I used the paintbrush coloring tool in the Creality Slicer to isolate some parts, and this worked super well. I did run into some problems when trying to use this dusty old roll of glow-in-the-dark filament, which caused a few failures after snapping in the feed tube, so I switched to a rainbow PLA. This gave the spikes a cool gradient effect. That's all for today, but one final question here. Are we still calling this bamboo poop if it's made using a Creality machine? And let me know in the comments what you guys use this waste material for. 